Viewers, today has been a very, very busy news day. But there's, there's one story that has led to a massive meltdown in the self-proclaimed left liberal ecosystem. Every paid up member of this club is bearing fangs at the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud. Their one, their one time, quote, great liberal hope, unquote, had stunned them by declaring in a speech that he turned to some divine inspiration, to be precise to God, to guide him in writing the Ayodhya judgment that cleared the way for Hindus winning the Ram Janam Bhumi title suit. But as we know, once the Hindus got possession of the land in 2019, they constructed a magnificent Ram temple on the spot which attracts almost 4 lakh followers daily. The Chief Justice of India's admission means that he is being virtually called a closet Sanghi and as the practice has been, may even end up being discredited and cancelled by the ecosystem. The disillusionment with the CGI has been building up for a while. In fact, ever since the CGI shared a video of himself standing alongside the Prime Minister and conducting a Ganesh Puja, and you can see those pictures on the extreme right of your screens. And this happened at his own official residence. But before we go any further, let me quote to you what the Chief Justice of India has said. And he said, quote, when we were deliberating, remember he was one of five justices on that bench, when we were deliberating on the Ayodhya dispute for three months, we couldn't find a solution. We were discussing an issue for which a solution had not been found for decades. None of us could come to a conclusion on how to resolve it. During that time, I asked God to show me the path. Believe me, if you have faith, God will always find a way, unquote. Listen now, viewers, to the Chief Justice of India. You know, I have been in the work of Ayodhya. And I have been thinking about Ayodhya in three months. I have been thinking about Ayodhya in the work of Ayodhya. I have been thinking about Ayodhya in the work of Ayodhya. I have been thinking about Ayodhya in the work of Ayodhya. And I have been thinking about Ayodhya in the work of Ayodhya. कि यह जब मार्ग कैसा शोधा है इसका हमारा पुणे ले ही महीने होता है यह जब मार्ग कैसा शोधता है क्या वह हमी अपना दरोज़ जा दैनिक दिन जीवन जीवन आज माजी की पूजा करतो तो हमी देवान चपुड़े भगवान भगवान दान चपुड़े मी बस्तु थे हमी तरह सांगित ले यह जब मार्ग तुम्हीं शोधुं दिया आई नहीं that only Sanghis could contemplate. And therefore, the so-called secular parties were besides themselves with anger. Akhilesh Yadav's uncle Ram Gopal Yadav was so out of joint that he even hurled a filthy slur at the Chief Justice of India. And I can assure you that the slur was much worse than the ecosystem insinuating that the Chief Justice of India had turned saffron and strayed from the path of jurisprudence. This is what Ram Gopal Yadav Samajwadi Party member of parliament viewers said, when you bring the dead back to life, they turn into ghosts and haunt the public. Why should I heed such foolish remarks? That word foolish was actually an abuse, which we can't repeat on air for obvious reasons. The DMK, the DMK came out and said, Chief Justice should look at cases via the law and not faith. Udit Raj, Congress leader, Chief Justice should pray to God to resolve issues of common man. He should act against the weaponization of agencies against the opposition, unquote. Anand Dubey, Sena UBT Uddhav Thakre faction leader says, why didn't he pray to God to act when our party was illegally split, unquote. But an objective reading of the facts reveal that these accusations are totally devoid of any merit. The Chief Justice can be accused of many things, but he is no BJP camp follower and neither does his record in office, that is, a record of his judgments betray his exalted Hindu rights over others. If anything, Hindus grumble that he has been most parsimonious in rewarding their concerns. Now, here are some hard facts that establish this, viewers, and I always bring you the hard facts so you can get closer to the truth. You can separate the wheat from the chaff. The first hard fact, in November 2019, now, liberals may choose to ignore this, but in that Ayodhya judgment, 
This is what he said. The place of worship act 1991 is intrinsically related to the obligations of a secular state. It reflects the commitment of India to the equality of all religions, unquote. Basically, he has denied through this judgment, which is precedent setting viewers, the right to reclaim any of their places of worship, but for Ayodhya, because that's what that act says. So you underlined this act, or at least the five justices did, the bench did. That was no favor done to Hindus viewers. Yes, the overall judgment was in favor of the Hindus, but this ensured that no other claims could be made by Hindus. And this was roundly criticized by most Bhakts. Hard fact too, on September 2018, he shocked Hindus in the Shabrimala case. In Shabrimala verdict, the Supreme Court ruled that Rule 3B of the Kerala Hindu Places of Public Worship Rules 1965, which allowed the exclusion of women based on custom, was unconstitutional. As a result, viewers, women were allowed, especially women of a menstrual age, were allowed into the temple. This was something that had never, ever happened in history. Hindus were disappointed. Hard Fact 3, October 2024. The Chief Justice of India led bench refused to entertain PIL seeking rights for Hindus and others to manage their religious places just like Muslims do in this country. Again, Hindus came away feeling very upset or at least some devout Hindus did. And let's not delude ourselves either. It isn't as if the courts have not privileged religious rights in the past. So, the Chief Justice of India could have done what some of his predecessors have done. There have been instances when the Supreme Court has overruled the High Court because it felt that the law was being interpreted through a hard secular lens. But none of our ecosystem crusaders pitched a fit then. Perhaps because in these cases, minorities won considerable concessions. And so it suited their narrative to keep quiet. Once again, here are some hard facts, viewers. Now, hard fact four. In 2015, the Santara case, the Supreme Court upheld the Jain ritual of fasting to death, ruling it as an essential tenet of Jainism. The Supreme Court overruled the High Court, saying it infringed on secularism and did not consult Jain scholars. Viewers, they had no problem. No problem with the courts consulting Jain scholars. But they have a problem with D.Y. Chandrachud consulting God. Think about it, viewers. Hard Fact 2, 2024, child marriage order. Just came a few days back. The Supreme Court spurns the union government's invitation to direct application of the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act to citizens irrespective of their religion and personal law. In fact, the Supreme Court said that we could not apply the ban on child marriage across all faiths. No one had a problem, viewers. Holding up religion, no one had a problem. Can you imagine, viewers, the Supreme Court coming out and legitimizing child marriage, the exploitation of girl children? Think about it, viewers. Hard Fact 6, 1987. Bijo Emanuel versus the state of Kerala. Three students were rusticated for claiming their religious beliefs did not permit them to sing the national anthem. The Supreme Court overruled the action of the school authorities, saying they were violative of the fundamental rights to freedom of conscience and religion. They were perhaps also listening to some inner God viewers, but no one had a problem back then. But they have a problem just because, just because the Chief Justice looked to spiritual guidance. Moreover, the Chief Justice of India is not the first to look towards divine inspiration either to seek legal solutions in vexing cases. But no one ever suggested that these judges had turned communal, that they had sold their souls at the altar of communalism for some imagined gains. Here's hard fact seven. In 2017, Kerala High Court quoted the Ephesians 431-32 in a case between two church factions in Kerala. So here, viewers, they were quoting scriptures to pass a judgment over what was a property dispute. Hard Fact 8, 2023, Kerala High Court quoted Ephesians again, 6223, Proverbs 2322, and Timothy 58. In a Christian maintenance judgment, so again, the holy book was being quoted. Here, 
the Chief Justice of India only asked God, contemplated and said, show me the right path. He didn't quote any scriptures, viewers. But there's a huge problem. In 2015, Gujarat High Court quoted multiple verses from the Quran to decide that a Muslim cannot be prosecuted for bigamy. Hard Fact 10, 2023, Justice Kurian Joseph stirred a controversy by reportedly equating the Catholic Church with the Bible. No one had any problems with this, viewers. No one said, oh my gosh, the High Court, the Supreme Court, all these justices have become communal, they're closet sanghis. No one had a problem. But the Chief Justice goes to a puja with the Prime Minister, it's a big problem. He says in public that, look, sometimes when we are in stress, when we are not getting things, we look for some spiritual guidance. We look up to God. We ask Him to show us the way. All of us have done it, viewers. That doesn't make us communal, does it? Let's open this up. Let's have an informed conversation. We have with us Sanjay Hegre, a senior lawyer of the Supreme Court. Mr. Hegre, let it, let it be very clear. I'm not sitting here and advocating for some sort of theocracy. Let me be very clear. I don't even believe that the Chief Justice needed to have made this statement. But for a moment, for a moment, let's look at the record. And I have, I've shown you some hard facts. Why is only he being singled out for blame when, when he hasn't really done great favors? And I, I'm sure Dr. Ranganathan and Vishnu Jain will tell you how frustrated they are actually with the Chief Justice of India and the Supreme Court. May not be in particular, but certainly the institutions. So what is this whole sort of you know, insinuation that he's become a Sanghi, etc., etc. Well, I have not insinuated that. Good. Okay. Yeah. Again, good. I mean, you, you seem to you want a straw man, liberal, etc., etc. So I'm not playing that. No, don't. I must also tell. I'm, no, no, I've, I'm not asking okay, you. Come I'm on. only saying, I, I, what do you I'm, make of it? No, so, I so didn't blame you. Play. No, no, let, you do. No, I you haven't. Where have I, have I said okay. that you are a, okay, they, let, let's you are leave, a straw let's man, liberal? <laughs> Uh, le uh, let's leave it at, at that. <laughs> I, I, I'm asking I, a professional opinion, well, sir. Yes, yes, a, a professional opinion. The Chief Justice of India, much before he was Chief Justice, was also my professor of law. I've learned a lot from him. That's wonderful. I respect him greatly. But oh. uh, there is a time and place for everything. Uh, yes, I know of many judges who even before they sit on the bench, they say a small prayer. I know of a judge who said that God let uh, not any injustice happen at my hand. The people turn to all kinds of inspiration when, when they sit on the bench or when they have to solve a problem. No problem whatsoever. They, there has be, a, even been a judge who passed a very famous stay order after supposedly communing with his dead wife. People get their legal inspiration from various courses. Their life experiences are all part of it. However, the Chief Justice of India today is very near retirement. And as Bacon very famously once said, a much talking judge is like an ill-tuned symbol. If the Chief Justice had said that before the neat matter, when there were hundreds of thousands of students were looking up to see whether it was, it was going to get cancelled or it was not going to get cancelled. I asked for divine inspiration, which is the correct choice to make. Nobody would have said a thing. Context is everything. Here is the Ayodhya matter, a matter on which uh, there were very strong religious beliefs on either side. Now, to say that a religious matter was decided uh, by divine inspiration is something which he could have best avoided at this particular point of time. And uh, it's not me who made this kind of uh, uh, conflation. You made it in your opening remarks when you pointed out that uh, he was uh, there performing puja at his house with the Prime Minister of India. At that point of time, people had a problem. Yes, our problem is this. We are a, a state that believes equally in all religions. Any impression by the head of any institution, whether it be the chief justice, whether it be the army chief, whether it be the prime minister, whether it be 
any institution whatsoever <laughs> to color that institution with only one religion that sends a wrong message okay he colored it with only one religion the saffron saffron brush is what it's come down to the context is also wrong he shouldn't have done this dr ranganathan vishnu jain uh let me come to both of you let's set this uh, debate up dr ranganathan what do you make of this response from sanjay hegre uh good evening rahul and good evening to my fellow panelists look i'm afraid this is a deliberate and conceited attempt by the usual suspects to discredit the ayodhya judgment they've been waiting for this for 5 years praying to god for a solution does not mean that the solution was provided by god and i'm saying it as a darwinian atheist praying meditating is to garner inner peace and confidence quote i owe everything to goddess namakal who leaves formula on my tongue in my dreams unquote who said this ramanujan quote i always found solution to difficult engineering problems during the prayer of fajr who said this abdul kalam narendra kapani inventor of the fiber optic cable was a religious seek and believer in the divinity of the sacred gurus quote earth was formed by god in 6 days unquote who said this raymond damadian inventor of the mri isro chief prays regularly at tirupati before every launch does all this mean that god discovered the value of pi cryogenic engine fiber optics or the mri also ironical that many of those who are mocking the possibility of god dictating the judgment themselves believe that god dictated the holy verses that they and 2 billion of their core religionists abide by besides this same judge has ratified anti hindu places of worship act anti hindu state control of temples anti hindu shabrimala judgment refused to open criminal cases against kashmiri hindus victims of genocide how is all this pro hindu rahul the only friend of justice is evidence and evidence it was that prevailed in the supreme court ayodhya verdict let not anyone be fooled i take you back to the story of the turin shroud during that 2000 years that was believed that to have been used for wrapping the body of jesus christ after crucifixion until in 1989 when scientists proved through carbon dating that it was only 600 years old that is the brute force of science and evidence they are the bulwarks of justice not faith and emotion let me sum up very quickly the sc ayodhya judgment with facts taken from the judgment this is what the supreme court accepted number 1 the babri mosque was not constructed on vacant land the excavation indicated the presence of an underlying structure below the disputed structure two the underlying structure was not of islamic origin three on a preponderance of probabilities the archaeological findings on the nature of the underlying structure indicate to be of hindu religious origin dating to 12th century ad four the layered excavation at the site of excavation has also revealed the existence of a circular shrine together with makara pranala indicative of hindu worship dating back to 8th to 10th century five the underlying structure which provided the foundation for the mosque together with its architectural features are suggestive of a hindu religious origin six the asi conclusion that the nature of the underlying structure and the recoveries which have been made would on stylistic grounds suggest the existence of temple structure dating back to 12th century would on balance of probabilities be a conclusion supported by evidence seven finally their 1891 asi report also cited by one of the sc judges and it unequivocally stated that mir khan built a masjid on janamsthan during the reign of babar which still bears its name quote this old temple must have been a very fine one end quote and after the ayodhya judgment when the foundations were being laid for the new ram temple you know it excavations found tens of idols and inscriptions of hindu gods and goddesses all of which pointed to the fact that indeed it was a hindu temple under the mosque so it was not some divine intervention as is being alleged here in the end just 10 seconds rahul justice and civilization won because to me civilization is this unquenchable thirst of man to demand justice for his ancestors to correct a historical wrong for that exemplifies a continuity an idea a memory that can never be erased that is worth fighting for and preserving it makes rahul justice greater than the sum of its parts and what are the parts science and evidence and, and let me also say i'm coming back to you uh, yes i'm coming to you sanjay hegre i'm just coming to you i just want no on a question of fact no, i just He's want to say absolutely wrong is absolutely wrong the supreme court does not say that a uh, the mosque was built on a temple it says that there is a period of 200 years which is unaccounted for it as a matter of fact says that there was no temple which was 
destroyed to build that mosque. Now that uh, is misinformation. Okay. Mr. Ranganathan, correct yourself. Okay, let me bring in someone else's. Yeah, okay. Yes. Hindu religious origin. Mr. Hegde, I'm quoting... 200 years the between the last uh, religious structure and okay. the building of the mosque. Okay, so okay. In, the, in the interim that we have this gap, there was maybe there was a, Christian, a Christian grave there or something. <laughs> I mean, Whatever, what are you supposed the Supreme to think? Court, Anyhow, one second, court, one second, viewers. That's the Supreme Court okay. judgment. Fair enough. And so, if, Supreme and court if lawyer, you misrepresented, okay. if you Supreme misrepresented court then you mm. are doing injustice okay. to uh, your Sanjay viewers. Hegre, Sanjay Hegre, there are many people who have done injustice to that judgment, let me tell you, and done a disservice to their followers. We all know this, so let's not, you know. Okay, Anyhow, I, look, we all respect the point you're making. Sanjay Hegre said that context matters. This is a religious uh, issue where both sides had very strong, on either side there was a very strong belief, religious belief at stake. So, Vishnu Shankar Jain, I want to ask you, Kerala High Court quoted the Ephesians 43132 in a case between two church factions in Kerala. This must have been really a tussle where the religions were extremely involved. This is not something that was, uh, you know, ephemeral or something that you couldn't put your finger on, like a contemplation. This was a book from which they were quoting. No problems there. No one said, oh, this judge, the Kerala High Court has become a Sanghi court. No one has said that, viewers. Nobody. Then he said context matters. So Kerala, Kerala High Court quoted the Ephesians again in 2023, just last year. And this time, Proverbs also and Timothy also in a Christian maintenance judgment. Now here also the co-religionists were at each other's throats. But no problem there. Viewers, the Kerala High Court between 2017 and 23 remained the bulwark of secularism. But poor Chandra Chudi sat under a tree, looked up and contemplated God. He got whacked. He has taken this institution to the dogs. Okay. Uh, Gujarat High Court quoted multiple verses from the Quran in 2014. Yes, verses, the revealed word, as Dr. Ranganathan says, to decide that the Muslim cannot be prosecuted for bigamy. Here also, viewers, let me tell you, religious feelings must have been really at stake. And then, context matters. In 2023, Justice Kurian Joseph stirred a controversy by reportedly equating the Catholic Church with the Bible. So, how does this context differ when it applies to the Chief Justice of India and when it applies to several others? Vishnuji. See, uh, see, good evening, Rahul. I think that there is a very emerging trend in our democratic process that if there is a judgment which is against your viewpoint, you not only criticize the judgment, you criticize the judge also. And let me give you certain examples. The, when you are giving the example of Justice Kurian Joseph, I will give you an example of Justin Kuri Justice Kurian Joseph itself in 2015, wherein he said that I will not attend an event on Good Friday and there should have been a holiday on Good Friday. So if a judge, uh, let me just uh, put it in perspective. If a judge is having a personal belief, if he's a believer, if he's worshipping the deity, and if he is taking divine intervention and spiritual intervention to come to a solution, what is the problem in this, Rahul? Let me quote you certain uh, portions from Ayodhya judgment. In Ayodhya judgment, there are certain areas where we have lost Rahul. And what are those areas? Hindu deity is a perpetual minor. This proposition of law, which was enunciated by the Ilabar High Court, was uh, curtailed by the Honorable Supreme Court. So, so far as the aspect of historical wrong is concerned, that aspect was curtailed by the Honorable Supreme Court, which was argued by my senior Mr. Parasaran. So far as the aspect is concerned of uh, uh, places of Worship Act 1991, which was not an issue at all in Ayodhya Ram Mandir case, that was also commented upon by the Supreme Court. Secularism being a principle was also brought in a, in the Ram Mandir case. Apart from that, Rahul, five acres alternate land was given to the uh, Masjid Committee in Ayodhya Ram Mandir case. Review petitions were filed, 11 review petitions were filed, and then it was dismissed. So the point is this, that if you are not happy with the judgment from past five years, let me tell you with a lot of sense of responsibility, a proper conspiracy is going on to upturn the Ayodhya judgment to create an atmosphere in the country that this Ayodhya judgment is erroneous and somehow 
bring the uh, bring the masses so that this ayodhya judgment can be overturned on the streets point number 1 point number 2 rahul please appreciate that in ayodhya ram mandir case there were five honorable judges who decided the matter justice abdul nazir also decided the matter justice uh, ashok bhushan also decided the matter justice bobde also decided the matter justice gogoi also decided the matter and today you are calling names to the honorable chief justice of india i do not want to repeat here the comment of uh, mr ram gopal it is it is completely contemptuous and as an officer of the court let me tell you that he has undermined the dignity of the honorable court apart from that rahul please appreciate a very important proposition that in ram mandir you call lot of names to justice gogoi quid pro quo was alleged against him what happened to justice nazir was he not made governor in andhra pradesh where was there any voice in this country that it was a quid pro quo well uh, um, justice ashok bhushan is a part of commission in the uh, in the, in a uh, national capital of delhi was any comment uh, made against justice bhushan so you are making allegations against a particular just okay. against a particular judge being an officer of the court which is completely erroneous and contemptuous okay. if you are not happy with the judgment reasonable criticism is permissible no difficulty but if you are criticizing the judge on the issue of timing now just 30 seconds more it is very very erroneous what are you trying to attribute to the honorable chief justice of india what do you mean by this timing if he is making this uh, uh, comments at this point of time do you mean to say that he is uh, trying to help somebody what is the what is the what is the attribution and the same attribution has happened in the book of pranam mukherji please i am quoting the book turbulent years where pranam mukherji has said that is the biggest mistake of rajiv gandhi to open the locks of ram mandir while the fact of the matter was that the locks of ram lalla was opened on under the orders of the district judge so attributed okay. motives to the honorable district judge so let me say let me also say yes uh, dr ranganathan wants to come in and i want to open this up also yes very, yeah very, hmm. very briefly thank you for the intervention vishnu to clear a lot of air because number one and that is why i i, I don't know my um, a uh, good friend the learned counsel mr hegde was able to hear or not that is why i quoted the supreme court judgment verbatim the walls the foundations the pillars of the babri disputed structure were of indicative of a hindu religious origin so, so, so obviously they were i want to, i want Whatever a small no one second i want a clarification here because you see mr hegde said and i please correct me if i'm wrong mr hegde came out and said that you see the belief religious belief on either side in this case was extremely strong that's yeah. what he said right now i want to ask you yeah. wasn't there a judgment before this that said that masjids uh are not places of worship really ismail farooqi's case ismail farooqi yeah. case that they came yes. out and said that that yes. look in presidential reference right so then this was just a property dispute for one side how was it a matter of belief for one side one side yes it was a matter of belief the other side it was a mere property dispute that's why they kept saying let's compromise yeah and can i can i just can add I to in? that that is yeah, why i was yes yeah. yeah, sanjay one second uh, that was i was at length to emphasize my opinion which yeah. is that faith matters of religious belief cannot enter justice because justice is based based on science and evidence okay if the asi said that the babri masjid does not stand the walls foundations pillars are not of hindu religious origin then the ram temple should not have been given to the the yodha okay. judgment should not have gone to this that is my opinion okay mr hegre okay yeah now forget your opinion the judgment records simply this that there may have been an underlying religious structure we do not know when and that there is a period of 200 years between the structures that that the asi claims sure. and 1563 when the when the masjid was built that is but despite all that mm. the supreme court says that both sides have proved their case both sides are given decrees and that we shall use no, our no, special no. powers under 142 of the constitution of india to uh, to bring final peace okay. we will say that five uh, uh, twice the amount of land be given to the muslims but at another site far away no i can understand court, that uh, viewers just think about this the absurdity if your house is demolished by somebody else 
Would you say, nay, nay, let the other person who's demolished your house have the house, but we'll give you something, you know, if you're living in, let's say, uh, Noida, we'll give you something in Gurgaon. Go there. Listen, do, uh, you know, that look, is look, the Supreme Court's look, special no, no, one power second, one under second, one second. Yeah, yeah, but it's absurd, viewers. It's absurd. I mean, you so will not redress. You are calling. You, you are will calling not. The Ayodhya so, so what? Absurd. So what? You one can say. One can say. One can absurd. say on this particular issue. I haven't. This matter went up, sir, in a challenge. Absurd. This matter no, no. went up in a challenge. The ground of land, five kilometers away. I still can't understand why it was given. That's what I'm calling so into the, question. I find that so absurd. They, yes, you might so have they, done they, it out of a sense of largesse so and benevolence just, and all of just that. Decide, but that doesn't just work. Just decide whether you are for the Ayodhya judgment I am or for you are it, against the but judgment. I am trying to bring out, sir, in, in, in stark terms, also some of the absurdities where the judge goes into the Places of Worship Act, which are not even impugned in any which way. He had no so business you going in there. So, so you're no saying that the judgment was absurd. One second, one second. No, no, you're please. You're saying that the don't, judgment don't, was absurd, Don't, don't apply this no, 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 blanket. No, no, no. I'm, I'm using your own technique. I'm saying, sir, that an aspect of it. Your... That an aspect yes of it. That an aspect of it. That an aspect of it, Mr. Hegre. Mr. Hegre, Mr. Hegre, please listen to what yes I'm saying. No? You're not listening to me. Now you've got into this funk where you're holding on to some words. I am telling you. I'm just putting your own techniques against you. I am adding the caveat. I'm adding the caveat. I'm not lying. I'm adding the no, caveat. No, no, no. I found the grant of land to the Muslim community, the five acres, at another place, absurd. That doesn't mean that the judgment you was wrong. You have to take the judgment as Anyhow, a whole, right? Uh, one, okay, second, now, one second. Yeah, no, yeah, listen, yeah, that one area was also one challenged. More thing and I'm done. That one area more was thing also challenged. Many more people challenge done. aspects of judgment, okay, so that, don't teach yeah, me the law. Yeah, one no, minute. No, yeah, Kamru yeah, Chaudhary. One more thing. One more thing. One second. Kamru Chaudhary. I don't have all the time. Let them also have All those Christian... Oh, uh, all those Christian verses. Let yes. me also tell you that when the courts decide on Hindu matters of faith between two sections of Hindus, yes. then it quotes a lot of a lot of Hindu verses. Precisely. As well. Thank you for between saying two that sets proves of my angles. point. QED. That when it happens, we are all quiet. Actually, you've proven my point. This happens no. regularly, viewers. But you see, the context, Chief Justice of India context, has to be pulled up context. by the neck and dragged. To the nearest context lamppost. Matters. That is what context happens, viewers. Matters. The context doesn't matter in all these cases. The con in the religious cases, also the context doesn't matter. But in Ayodhya, the context matters. You've just proven my point. Uh, Kamru Chaudhary, please. Sorry, Hussain yeah, sir. Yeah, yes. Rahul, Rahul, <clears throat> thank you for coming at the last fag end of your debate. But anyhow, very quickly, uh, for the benefit of the viewers, you know, this entire issue of the Ram Janmabhoomi and the Babri Masjid case is already a dead horse. Why flog it now unnecessarily and weep up patience right now? That's my first point of view. Because we all know and we all criticize the judgment when the, uh, uh, when the case actually came up at that time. And we even went on record and said that the entire judgment was ultra virus of the constitution. And today the Chief Justice of India had seconded our views at that time. Because during wow. the judgment in page number 215, what did the judgment say? It is true that in matters mm -hmm. of faith and belief, the absence of evidence may not be an evidence of absence. And today also the Chief Justice of India has seconded that, that he has uh, given this judgment on the basis of his inner faith. It's true, fine. All the Hindus and Muslims of this country have accepted the judgment and, and, and said that let us proceed along. There is nothing left in it. Otherwise, today's statement is ultra virus. Why? Because it infringes upon Article 25, 26, Article 14, Doctrine of Separation of Powers, Article 142, Article 15. All this article will be challenged if we go and in verbatim what, uh, what the Honorable Chief Justice of India said today with regards to the judgment. Okay. But forget about it. Okay, one forget single about judgment, one single simple thing that is still hmm. not a dead horse hmm. is the Gyanwapi Masjid issue. Hmm. Gyanwapi Masjid issue. When the basement puja. Okay, but let's not bring that in. Kamruji, let's not bring that in. That's a separate matter. It's ultra. No, no, it's not one second. Rahul. And 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 you said the you said the the judgment of places of worship act does not apply to the Gyanwapi Masjid. But you maintained the status quo just because a a court in Uttar Pradesh had allowed the puja in the basement. Okay, so, that there, so are two, there are two are different issues. So one second, there are two different are issues. issues. Yes, Hassan Saab, one second. Yes. Hassan Saab, yes, Bolye. Go ahead. Both, both, Shukriya, that 29 minutes after you have shown your love, Rahul Sahib. 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज सुप्रीम बट नॉट इट इज नॉट इनफेलेबल और जस्टिस अभी संजय हेगड़े साहब ने बड़ी अच्छी बात कही पूरी बात आप समझ गए होंगे और चीफ जस्टिस साहब संविधान से ऊपर नहीं है हम उनकी इज्जत करते हैं चीफ चीफ जस्टिस साहब को यही डिवाइन जो उमर खालिद सैफी और जो लोग जो पांच साल से जेल में बंद है उस पर भी ध्यान देना चाहिए चीफ जस्टिस साहब को इस चीज पर भी ध्यान देना चाहिए कि पैंतीस जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट और हाईकोर्ट के रिटायर्ड विश्व हिंदू परिषद के सभा में चले जाते हैं और वहां पर लॉ मिनिस्टर रहते हैं तो समझ में नहीं आता है शक उठता है हमारी अधिकार है संविधानिक है मोदी को बुलाते हैं वीडियो जारी करने की जरूरत नहीं थी मोदी जी आ सकते हैं प्राइवेट अफेयर था लेकिन देश को वीडियो को जारी करने से संविधान हम मानने वाले हैं नागपुर से देश नहीं चलता है संविधान से चलता है और राहुल साहब एक बात और बता दे आपने ग्यारह अक्टूबर को एक ट्वीट किया था हैदराबाद में एक मूर्ति के टूटने पर लिख दिया था आपने लुंगी वाले का सस्पेक्ट है डीसीपी वहां के यादव जी हैं उन्होंने कहा कृष्णा गौड़ ने किया था उसको भी ट्वीट आप ठीक कर लेते तो अच्छा होता सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज सुप्रीम बट नॉट इन किसी मुस्लिम पक्ष ने right. मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड ने जमीन नहीं मांगा था पांच पांच कट पांच एकड़ जमीन नहीं मांगा था मस्जिद हमारा आस्था है जब जब क्यामत के सुबह तक बाबरी मस्जिद हमारे लिए है और रहेगी रिलीजियस फंक्शन में वो नहीं जाते थे ये एक चीफ जस्टिस का प्रोटोकॉल था वो अवॉइड करते थे हम घर में बट आप चाहते हैं कि उम्मीद करते हैं कि जो भी थैंक यू जी दुनिया का देश का संविधान का जज्बात का ख्याल ठीक है जस्ट वन सेकेंड व्यूज ऑन दिस ट्वीट बिजनेस दैट इज रेस्ड आई वॉज कोटिंग एन ऑफिसर हु सेट दिस I didn't say these were not my words. I put them no, no, in you, quotes. You, you I put them in quotes, sir. If you don't understand English grammar, it's no, not no, my problem. Point number two. Point the, number two. Point number two, two viewers. On this wala. issue, on you this issue of you see, we should not have a crossing over of executive and religion and state and all that. Aren't these the people who first say? That we should have. Okay, stop. I'll have to lower your fader. I don't know why you're speaking over me. Am I speaking over you, sir? I'm moving on to the next debate. You're misquoting me. It's fine. I'm not going to get myself in a twist. It's okay. We are all grown-ups here. Now, I just want to say, viewers, one thing. Then don't insist that the prime minister must wear the skull cap and roam around, because that's what they want. They want him, and they make a big deal out of it. Must wear a skull cap. He doesn't wear a skull cap, so he must be communal. This is what they say, viewers. And now they're saying that hum kabi nahi jaate hain. We never went as court officers to any religious function. Mm. But the prime minister must wear a skull cap. Why, viewers? Why aren't we applying a standard argument? Why is it that the context doesn't matter when the Kerala High Court quotes the Ephesians, but context matters when the Chief Justice?